declare thou shalt forbear the vow which shall be no sin in thee. So in Deuteronomy chapter 3, we are instructed that if you make a vow before God, keep it, because he will hold you to it. But if you is better for you, in essence, it's better for you to not make a vow than to make a vow and break it. In Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse, verses 4 and 5, when thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better it is that thou shouldst not vow than that thou should vow Thou shouldst vow and not pay. So we even see in this place, in the court of Ecclesiastes, God considers the individual who makes a vow and break it as a fool. If you don't think you can keep it, don't make the vow. But if you tell God that you're going to pray and fast for one meal, then keep it. Now, I've been in those situations to be honest, it was easier for me to fast at Bible school than it is for me to fast at home. It really is. Reason being at home, I have control over what I have in my house to eat, and I know whether or not. So, of course, I have what I like. And it's very easy to go to the cupboard and not think about it, Brother Craig, and pop something in my mouth and not realize until I'm halfway through it, to, oh, I'm fasting today. Does that mean that that fast is broken? We all mess up. Just don't use that as an indication to say, oh, I already broke it, now I keep going. Well, push it aside, ask for forgiveness, and then keep on with your fast. Because if we're gonna be truthful, I've done that on multiple occasions. If you take a bite of a Twinkie and about three chews into it, you realize that you need And you don't want to waste it, so you just finish chewing. In fact, as a side note, there, when I was in Bible school, there was a son of a big name preacher down south, and he was fasting. And my one friend walked out during lunchtime and saw him taking this bread into his mouth, chewing it up, and spitting it out. And then he'd take another big bite chew it up and spit it out. And keep in mind, this isn't a little guy. This guy is bigger than me yet. He's probably clearly about 6'3". So when confronted with what he was doing, he replied, well, so-and-so made me this bread, and I'm fasting today, and it looked so good, I just wanted to taste it, but since I'm fasting, I can't eat it. So what he was doing was he was taking big bites of this bread, chewing it up and spitting it out. Is that cheating on your fast? I am not getting involved in that one. That's between you and God. But if you make a fast, you keep it. If you find yourself in the middle of the cupboard, accidentally eating half of a cookie, ask for apology and move on. Keep the fast. Don't use it as an occasion to fall. And there are different kinds of fasts. You can fast individually, you can fast with somebody else, you can fast as a couple, or you can fast with multiple people. Yes, I know that the Bible says what some of you do, do in private, but if you're fasting for the same reason, there is power in numbers. There's a reason that the scripture states where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. But you can fast individually as a couple or corporately. Individually, I know this is going to come out of the shop, but it's when you fast all by yourself and no one else knows it. When we look throughout the Word of God, we see that there are examples of men who fasted by themselves when no one else did. In the book of Exodus, chapter 24 and 18, we find Moses on top of a smoky mountaintop. And he's up there, and yes, he's receiving the commandment of God, but he's fasting the whole time while he's up there. 
In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verses 7 and 8, we find that Hannah fasts for her son. In Matthew, chapter 4, and verse 2, we find Jesus in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And what's he doing? He's fasting. But there's no one else out there. He's fasting by himself. By himself. How do we know that there's no one else with him? Well, this passage is very easy because as soon as he gets back, he's rebuking the disciples because how long shall I be from you? You can't even cast out this demon. How long must I suffer with you? And Jesus said this, I cannot help but my prayer fast. But the fact that he's in the wilderness and nothing's mentioned the disciples, and then he comes back and he's rebuking them and specifically saying, how long must I suffer you? Is a prime example that he was fasting by himself and with no one else. You can fast with your spouse. First Corinthians chapter seven, verses four and five. If someone will go ahead and read that. First Corinthians chapter seven, verses four and five. First Corinthians chapter seven, verses four and five. Someone else, while well, they're looking at that, find Jonah chapter 3 and 5. Jonah 3 5, and we're going to close with that one today. Jonah 3 5. What if I have no power of own body but the husband? Likewise, also the husband has no power of his own body but the wife. He brought it on one thing, not one the other, except the people who sent for a time, that you may give yourselves to fast and burn. And come chapter. together again, that safe country you come. Know. So in this passage, we find that a husband and a wife can fast together. And then finally, we have people that pray and fast by themselves. We have couples that fast together. And finally, we have corporate fasting. What is corporate fasting? When two or more people join together in prayer and fasting for the same purpose. We find this in Jonah chapter 3, verse 5. If someone has that, Jonah 3, 5. I'll go ahead and read that. Jonah 3, 5. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. Here we have a perfect example of corporate fasting where two or more fast for the same purpose and reason. Here we have the entire city of Nineveh fasting. So when it comes to fasting, there is no time set. There is no number on the, there is no limit on the number of people who can join in the fast. But we are given clear stipulations that when you fast, don't make it publicly known. Don't go bragging about it. Don't be prideful about it. Because in all honesty, that is the opposite means of what fasting is to be. A fast is a time of humbling ourselves before God to see Him move in a particular situation, for Him to move in our life, or to send revival to our country. Whatever the reason, we God has already laid it out and showed to us what a fasting is. Next week we'll pick up with uh, continuing on talking about the types of fast, and then that will conclude our portion of fasting and evangelism. Does anybody have any thoughts, any comments, anything they want to add? Yeah. If not, let's bow our heads and prepare our hearts for service. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and shall continue to do. Lord, we thank you that you're God who reigns on high and that there's none like you. Lord, right now we rebuke every attack of the enemy that's come our way. 
We pray that you set your angels at the four corners of the property above and below, that no attack of the enemy may penetrate. I pray that our hearts and our minds would be in one mindset, one accord, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, that the Holy Ghost may move as he so desires, making, making himself visible if he so chooses. I pray that our hearts and our minds will be plowed, that they would be good soil for your word to follow, that we may remember your word throughout the week, but even greater than that, that we would apply it to our lives. We ask you to anoint the song leader and the musicians, given the songs you have us to sing to bring praise and worship to your name, Lord. Anoint the mind of the pastor and his lips, Lord, that he bring forth your message today. And may our hearts receive them, Lord, and our minds. May we apply it to our lives, Lord, that we may even trans be transformed into your image even more. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. 